All right. We are anxiously awaiting the arrival of Ivan Drag Shah. I think I overpronounced his last name, Drag Shah. I'm going to ask him to say it a few times. We'll see how that goes. Oh, there he is. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I wanted to start these, uh, this series of talking to other top jugglers uh, just to kind of provide more access to, you know, the WJF submissions and the competitions and, and, and kind of get a collaborative effort on the direction that we want to go in all of this. So yeah. I thought I'd start with you since you asked some questions um, a while ago when I started um, my uh, podium speeches. So uh, what I also want to do, though, and th this would have been great when I was starting off, I think, is to pro provide access for kids that are just starting out in juggling, maybe beginners yeah, or juniors uh, who are unclear about the rules and just have conversations with them directly and then put those videos up so that uh, other people yeah. can kind of learn from them and get a better understanding of how the competitions are scored and, and what they want to work on or what they need yeah. to work. Yeah, that's quite clever. And in that vein, I wanted to get your thoughts on um, what we want to start doing. I tried doing this years ago, which is creating kind of uh, skill sets that you have to um, kind of like in martial arts, the belt system. So we create like mm -hmm. a criteria of different moves that you have to perfect. And then you get certified at a specific, like either a beginner level, junior level or um, intermediate element. or advanced. Yeah. Okay. So you yeah. so it's your direction on what you uh what you need to work on to get that certification so like in the juniors competition that's already set like everything in the juniors is a predefined set of different moves that i put together uh to make a juggler well-rounded like in sight swaps overhead throws back crosses shower patterns um and then with clubs different types of moves that are that are more you know uh, uh related to clubs and with rings as well but at least for me yeah the um, the juniors videos was really, really important um, because uh, as I mentioned in the video that I published, it was way more relatable for me when I was young than seeing the advanced jugglers. Mm. Um, so I actually did this um, quite a lot of years after the video came out. I, I, almost, I kind of made a checklist of all of the tricks that were in the WJF uh, Juniors videos. Yeah, yeah. And I tried to accomplish every single trick. That okay, they did. so you're, you're kind of doing it already. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's how, I mean, I think a lot of us probably start that way just by watching videos and, you know, taking the yeah. moves. Maybe not all of them, but, but, but you know, the ones that, uh, that are most interesting. Um, but I mean, in some cases, if you, um, if you idolize a specific juggler, you might try to even learn their whole routine and then perform yeah. it the same music they performed. You know, as, as kids, you don't, intellectual right. property theft is not a thing in your head. You're just, you know, idolizing other jugglers yeah. and trying to be like them. So what I thought we would do with that, because, you know, when, when you reach a certain level of achievement in various different disciplines, you get something for it, either a medal, a belt, a certificate or something like that. And so I was trying to think what would be the most meaningful and... Mm. What I came up with um, is that their video uh, would have like a, a like a stamp on it, like a seal of approval, and put on the WJF YouTube channel. So that way they can show everybody that they're you know what they did to reach the current skill level that they're at. They can show them the video and it's verified because it's on our YouTube channel. So yeah. it's kind of like um, it's kind of like the um, a, a decentralized uh cryptocurrency of verifying cert certification yeah, <laughs> for, for I, I, I actually have uh, something there um so back quite a lot of years when i went to circus school uh in my town and christian van Wyk, he was my teacher hmm, okay. and um and one year they kind of had this um you you could get a diploma for uh, being at a certain skill level in different uh, disciplines in circus. So for example, unicycle or juggling. Yeah. And, um, and for juggling, uh, if you wanted to get level one, you had to do like 20 catches of three balls and maybe do some scarves juggling and stuff like that. Hmm. And uh, I think at least from level three and to level five, it was 10 different um, tricks or accomplishments that you had to do and if you did eight of them 
eight out of ten, you uh, approved that level in a way. Um, um, so there was some margin for error then. You didn't have to do. Yes. Yeah, I, I might Everything. be more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I remember I, I got the level four and I was like super stoked. Uh, I tried for three weeks to get the the seven ring qualify, which was. Mm. Uh, on that level. And I remember at level five, I got like one trick, which was a qualify of five ring uh, pancakes. Yeah. But except for that, it was like, it was out of my skill level. But of course now it wouldn't be a problem, but um, that, that was super, uh, super fun for me at least to try and get, oh, I need to get this one, need to practice this one at the home so that when I get to, um, uh, to the juggling practice, I can show Christian that I, I can do it now uh, yeah, so that yeah. I can get the diploma. Uh, that yeah. was definitely something that worked for me. Yeah. No, I think that would work. That would have worked for me. Um, I was just, <laughs> I was only responsible to myself. I mean, back when yeah. I was doing this, there was, it was nothing but isolation and loneliness for like, you know, everything but a week out of the year. And like yeah. the only people that saw it were people that wished I wasn't there doing it. You know, they, they would have rather played basketball around me or racquetball or, or whatever it is. It's just like I'm, yeah. wasting, I'm wasting the space. Um, so to have that kind of motivation, that clear direction, uh, sounds like it's worked. Um, and yeah. uh, so I think what I'll do is um, it'll all, I don't know how many levels there'll be right now, but it seems like there should be at least, I mean, anywhere between five and 10. But the last one would be the Olympic caliber level which I think, so everyone's going to look at that and like, you know, that's their whole sport competition career path, getting from beginner to yeah. Olympic level. Yeah. And of course the Olympic level will just be insane. Oh, so I wanted to address uh, your question. Let me, let me read it correctly. <clears throat> Why isn't the WJF held different places in the world when it's called World Juggling Federation? For example, why not a collaboration with the EJC? Okay, so... Uh, you know, we have brought our event to TurboFest once in Quebec and then the BJC in 2007. So, yeah, we've... yeah. I, I, I've, I've actually, I actually didn't know about Quebec, but uh, of course, the UK Open. I've watched UK. that trailer so many times, man, with the, the four seven club jugglers lined up. Yeah. 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 And that was like a big thing for me is like, how many seven club jugglers can we get together? And if you look at the uh, the 2005 WJF convention video, I was only able to muster up two jugglers who could barely get it going for a qualify, which was Vova and Toby at that time. So we've gone yeah. from forcing two jugglers, and it wasn't the first try. We were there for a while trying to get both of them to do it at the same time. Yeah. And now we could like, you know, there could be like 10 or 15 jugglers if we got yeah. them all together doing that. So um, yeah, that was always a big thing for me is getting more seven club jugglers. But the other big thing was bringing our event to other countries. And of course, the logistics yep. of it and the cost and everything, uh, most of the time are, are prohibitive. Uh, but that was always uh, an objective for us. So um, we've tried uh, to bring it back to the BJC, uh, back to TurboFest, um, and, and they declined it. So we have tried to bring it back. And the reason they gave me is that they felt that uh, our events would take away attention from their events. So rather than thinking this would add more to their event, they just felt it would distract and uh, it wasn't really their thing. So it's difficult to find another event that aligns with what we do and, and wants to support it. Um, and then e we EJC just uh, didn't want it at all. So at least, I mean, it's a different organizer every year, I think. So I, I'm not really talking specifically about the EJC, but maybe one specific year but that was always a that was also a person that was organizing the BJC the year that we were there. So it's okay. it's the same person, same reason. Uh, yeah. So yeah. it's it's difficult to uh, to bring the event to other countries. But um, we do we do have an international effect. I mean we we don't have to change continents to have an effect on the world. We can still maintain you know our location in the U.S. But we bring in jugglers from all over the world. So every yeah. every event that we do is an international event. Uh, yeah. And like the grants that we have, like the junior sponsorship programs, uh, that Lauga one, that uh, Cody Harrington one, yeah. um, you know, those are all, you know, opportunities for jugglers globally to participate and actually get, you know, something pretty valuable. And it, it seems every time we've done that, someone from another country, usually the most expensive country to fly from wins it because they, I think, have the most incentive to try. Yeah. Right? 
yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, so those become costly. Uh, but, um, but that, that's what we can do from the U.S. to have an effect on the world. But now yeah. with the goal of getting in the Olympics, you know, that becomes more of a, so we're not, we're not going to be bouncing around doing events all over the world, but uh, sport jugglers in different countries uh, can form WJF affiliate clubs and then run their competitions. Their competitions will be run, you know, based on the scoring system of the WJF. And then if they shoot video of those competitions, we put them on the WJF uh, YouTube channel and maybe add commentary to it and produce it like we do our shows. Uh, so that leads me to my question for you, which is, yep. would you be willing to create a WJF affiliate club in your country and start trying to gather jugglers together um, either through video or at some point live in person when that's, you know, more socially acceptable these days. Uh, but for right now, we're doing it all through video. Um, but forming yeah. these clubs and then having country specific competitions, because we need to create like 40 of those 40 different yeah. countries over or three different continents. That's yeah. my question I, to you. Yeah, I think that sounds really, really cool. Um, but the, the only thing I'm thinking about is who would compete? Of course, we have, we have a couple. Uh, we have uh, some really, really good jugglers um, here, mm. uh, and all of us we, we know we know each other because we we have the skill level. So then it's I would say it's just about if they want to or not. Yeah, well, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if they're of the, uh, the sport juggling mindset and, and want to help, uh, help with that cause, uh, because we yeah. need to start, you know, rather than doing all of these international competitions, now we need to start separating it into countries. Each country yeah. has to have their group of jugglers, and then their best goes up against the best from other countries. So it's country against yeah. country now. It's not juggler against yeah. juggler necessarily. Yeah. How, uh, let's say just in an Olympics, how many participants could it be from one country? Is there a limit? Would you like it to be one or? That they, they determine that for each sport. So I don't have a say in that. What I, what I would have to do is, is conform to what they allot for me. So say, for example, they might say you can have 30, 30 participants in your sport. So I have to figure out where they come from. So we have yeah. to hold a lot of the preliminary rounds that determine the best in juggling for that year, the best in sport juggling for that year. Yeah. So that's why, like, you know, say you hold your competitions, we get the best uh, from your country. And then, you know, all the different countries are doing the same thing. And then we hold an event at the WJF uh, where they all compete against each other. So we create kind of a ranking system that way. Yeah. And by the time we're done with all of that, then we can we determine which countries get represented and how many jugglers from each country. Yeah. And, um, and then how many, the other question, uh, oh, this was a question I had for you is, they also determine how many uh, different meddling events we can hold. So like right yeah. now we have the overall championship, which is the main one. So, you know, you have to do a bunch of different competitions to win gold, silver, or bronze in that. But say they they allowed us three different events. So you can go in and do just one event and win an Olympic gold medal. So aside from the overall championship, how would we split that up? What would make the most sense? Because I've always felt you've got to, you've got to I mean, to win either the overall championship or, or to win something as significant as an Olympic medal, you've got to do something that nobody else can do. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, can it be as simple as just juggling more balls than anybody else? Should that alone be its own thing or should it be balls, rings and clubs in terms of endurance? Like, yeah. in, cause then in that case you could maybe not win one of them, but still win a gold medal. So that's what I'm curious what your thoughts are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's a tough one. Um, because I, I really like the idea of an overall championship uh, winner, but I also um, I also like the idea of having a winner in the rings category, for example, hmm. or a winner in the clubs, um, and of course the balls as well. Um, so that it's uh, yeah, and also at the WJF uh, events as well that we kind of more show showcase the juggler that okay these guys they actually won the rings uh overall or the balls overall 
Maybe we get that, that could be a thing. That overall balls or overall rings and overall clubs. Yeah, yeah. Because I've I've had this thing I'm from sure. the beginning that the ultimate juggler is proficient in balls, clubs, and rings, and has to demonstrate yeah. that. That's how the the overall champion is set up uh, right now. Yeah. And if they only give us one one set of medals, then we'll keep it that way because that that's what makes yeah. the most sense for just one set of medals. But I do kind of like the idea of overall balls, overall rings, overall overall clubs, because yeah. then you can specialize. And I think in the Olympics, don't they do that? Isn't there rings? Yeah. It's actually called rings. I, I, it's it, it's there. It's there in any sport. You know, um, let's say running. You know, the one hundred meters runner. They don't compete with in the marathon. It's running. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. It's both running, but it's two completely different Oh, uh, yeah. Athletes. yeah. Um, what would be really cool, though, is if we do separate it and the same person still wins it, then they get three yeah. gold medals. Yeah, I'm leaning toward that. I like that. Yeah, but maybe if, if it could be five, you know, one for endurance, one for balls, one for rings, one for clubs, one for overall. Maybe. Oh, and then overall. Oh, and then overall. Yeah. So you can, I, I'm not you, can sure. you can lose overall, overall. still get a gold medal. Yeah, or, or maybe just the four, so not the overall in the in the Olympics. Uh, I'm thinking. Yeah, but that also plays into uh, what people I'm understand. Sure. I think because people yeah. understand one category and meddling in yeah. specific category of a sport. Yeah. And, um, but I mean, they also over, they, they understand overall. So I think we could go either way, but, um, yeah, I like, I like the idea of having the opportunity to win all three, but not, not have to win all three to win anything. Yeah. I think that would work well. Yeah. But I, I feel like freestyle is a really cool thing to have, uh, in the competitions. And I think that it should be valued quite high, um, at least higher than it has been. And also, um, also the endurance, um, yeah. because I, I feel like they both are really important to determine a juggler. Um, of course, the routine shows most uh, of their juggling, but those two separate categories are super important as well. Um, especially if you think about what juggling is today or what sport juggling is today, which usually is on video, many takes, get that one super hard trick you know th that's the things that a lot of jugglers practice for nowadays um well they practice for the video though so that that's my yeah. worry like when we did the freestyle yeah. at wjf7 it was just constant dropping and dropping and nobody ever getting oh, yeah. anything. which would be yeah. entertaining if it was freestyle skateboarding because people falling down that's more entertaining yeah. than watching a juggler drop a ball and pick it up but yeah. um, so that that's my fear uh okay. in the freestyle yeah. So in terms of the scoring, I'm not I'm not against that. But the the reason why it's set up the way it is right now, anyway, is to just tip the scales if you're close in the short programs. Like a one point difference can be huge in the you know in the short programs because it's very difficult yeah. to get one point from all the moves and the connections. You know those those are just yeah. fractions of points that all add up. So if there were like if you won uh, the freestyle with clubs and that gave you five points, then there's less emphasis yeah. on doing a better short program. So that's kind yeah, of the balance yeah. we have to find with both of those. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's a balancing, balancing act for sure. The format for the freestyle. So we've done, we've done both versions. We've done the versions where everyone's out there at the same time rotating around. And then we've also done the version where it's just one person at a time and they get as many tries within a certain amount of time to get their moves, as many different moves as they can fit. So which one do you prefer? Um, I think that, um, uh, that you rotate that, that, that's kind of how it is in snowboarding with big gear and stuff. And I, I feel like that would be more entertaining than, than seeing the same guy do it over and over again, trying the same trick, maybe failing because yeah. if you always rotate, it's more exciting. What will happen next? What will he try now? Um, yeah, I, I, I think that's the way to go. So that's a balance for me as well, because it, I agree it is more entertaining for, for viewers, but I don't know if it sets up the jugglers to do their best. Because for me, if I only got one chance every six people, each chance feels like the first chance. 
Like, yeah. you know how in these moves, especially for these videos, like you're not going to get in on the first try, but you, if you do it again within five seconds, you have a better chance. And then another five seconds, but if you're waiting a minute or two, you know, yeah, you're, you're cooling down. That's true. Uh, it's, you know, all of these things are, and it needs to be uh, taken into consideration. I, even small things as um, how fast do you have to go from doing your club routine to your ring routine? Will you have enough time to get used to juggle mm -hmm. the rings before you okay. go on stage? Um, as for me, for example, uh, it's I'm not sure if it's smart or or stupid, but I've always practiced with clubs first, then rings, then balls. Hmm. I can drop out like uh, some of them, but doing it in uh, another order just feels strange to me. Um, so if I then do a ball routine, hmm. then I'm going to juggle clubs. It will feel strange for me uh, if I don't have enough time uh, in between. And, you know, making it perfect one day, I I I'm not sure like having only clubs one day or only rings one day. That could maybe help that, but yeah, it's so yeah. many things that you have to think about if you're going to make it optimal for every single every single person. Yeah, yeah. Well, then, how would you prepare for a routine where you ha would have to do balls, clubs, and rings all within oh. like <laughs> one routine? Yeah, yeah. Th th that's called uh, an act. Yeah, a performance. Yeah. 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 How do you do that? Yeah, exactly. Th then you just have to practice that. Practice doing uh, that prop and that prop and change it up and doing random practice. Um, you get yeah, good at what you practice at. When I do my show, it's a 45 minute show and I don't even get to clubs until 30 minutes into it. So yeah. I'll warm up before the show, balls, rings and clubs, everything will be ready to go. But then clubs will cool down for a half hour. And then I've yeah. got to start doing, you know, crotch throws and, and then my five club balance and kick up and back crosses. And, and it's like, yeah. you know, you got to be able to do it cold. I mean, not, not super cold, but in, in terms of club technique, that yeah. hasn't been warmed up. So, yeah. But I think maybe what if we did, um, so we do the rotation version, but yeah. maybe each juggler gets three tries per, you know, per try. Well, so that could be something. Yeah, then at least you get you got a fighting chance of getting it. I think because I I do like seeing the um, the competitive nature of people one upping each other and being out there all at the same time. That definitely makes yeah. it more yeah. more entertaining. Um, how uh, yeah? Uh, how long uh, would one freestyle event usually last if you have six jugglers rotating? It it usually I mean when we do it um, not for the Olympics but when, you know when we do it for our own events. It's, it's yeah. taken a long time. We don't have a specific amount of time allotted for it. We just do it until it's done. Um, but like we oh, would usually do 10 tries per person. Ten oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. that was one try, one try every time you, you, you work your way in the rotation. Yeah. Um, but I mean, those tries would sometimes, you know, if, if we don't limit uh, or if we don't in, insist that they start juggling right away, they're walking slowly. It takes them a while to get into position you know, all of those things added up, you know, add up to a lot of time. So, yeah. if, you know, it, the, the challenge has always been to make it fast paced and get people out there. Like I, I tell the competitors, you know, act like you want to get out there and do it. Don't like, you know, hesitantly walk out there and, 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 you know, buy time. Uh, so all of that can, uh, can play a factor in how long the whole thing takes. And usually toward the end, we're, we're, we're changing the rules and we're saying, all right, you only get five tries now because we got to go, <laughs> which is not <laughs> fair. Um, no. But I mean, you know, when you're out of time, you're out of time. So, you know, we got yeah. to do, do the math of that beforehand a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, some things that's quite often in snowboarding is that you have a certain amount of time and then you get as many attempts as you get uh, in a way. Yeah. Uh, and, and you always rotate. And for example, if, if three out of the six uh, jugglers have gotten their seventh attempt before the times run out, of course, the three last will also, also get it. But then the time stops. Yeah. Uh, so it's not maybe it's not three three tries every rotation, but just twenty seconds or thirty seconds or something like that. So yeah. you have you have a certain amount of time to fit in as many tries as as you can in that in that time yeah. period. In the future routines in long programs, will there be 
um, a scoring system for every single trick as it was uh, when I first competed. In- yeah, I want to go back to that, but just a correction yeah. on the terminology. They're still called short programs. Uh, okay. We only yeah. did we only did long program once, and that was basically just a performance. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But there's there's still the short program. It's just a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, I was looking at I was looking at the um, the move database and the connections and all of that yesterday, and um, it seems pretty simple to modify that and add more tricks to it. So I think yeah. rather than the way we scored it last year was just based on a. Uh, subjective objective scoring system yeah um i want to go back to because i think it's 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 more fun to be able to put your routine together like i want to get that on the website so like anybody can just play around with it whatever fantasy routine they want to put together or something they want to work toward and see what it would score so the hard part in all of that though is when you add new moves to it is scoring them relative to the moves that are already there like is this trick harder than this trick and if so by how much and for who so yeah. you know, there's always going to be disagreements with that. And no one, no one is ever going to be uh, unanimously happy about how that scores yeah. in the connections. But at, at least it's there, you know, and at least yeah. you, you have an informed decision whether you disagree with it or not, you know, how to, how to go about putting your routine together. Six club moves and a seven club uh, moves yeah. and will be added. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and those will, be added, will, will, those will be added based yeah. on your submissions. All right. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. So rather than me just trying to think up all the possible moves that can be done, you can put together whatever you want to do, and then you send that in, and then we'll put all those moves in the move database, and we'll debate back and forth what the scoring for right. that should be. But once we make that decision, then it'll be there, and then you can pull up those moves by the yeah. number, the corresponding number in the move database. Yeah. So uniforms. Um, yeah. I've been looking at. Um, gymnastics a lot. I mean, I, I created all of the rules from the beginning based off of the gymnastics code of points. And so it seems like there's, there's similar reasons for type fitting clothes in a variety of sports, which is so that they don't get in the way. Hope that's going through. Yeah. Yeah. I can see them. Okay. So I'm thinking, uh, something similar to that. Yeah. But with that, now I think uh, jugglers need to take their physiques a little bit more seriously. I think we all, I, I think we all need to look like athletes. And I, I think it's, it's not just for appearance, though. I, I truly do believe that the stronger you are, and I don't mean like for power, because juggling isn't really a power activity. It's more of an endurance activity. Uh, yeah. So at the very least, you should look like an endurance runner. But um, having a strong core and strong legs, that's the whole foundation of these juggling patterns. And you, you've seen the difference in people who like wiggle around when they juggle seven balls. Like they just, they, they, they don't have the stability and the yeah. strength there to control the patterns. And I, I think if, if you have all that, um, you can just be a better juggler overall, more of an athlete, right? Yeah, it, of course it helps. And especially with, uh, with things like high uh, ring numbers and club numbers. Um, yeah. and, and also, especially, uh, or also tricks like um, five club, uh, one high, four low pirouettes, and all of these explosive high throws. Yeah, and training is quite important, I think. Yeah, the the spins alone. Uh, there's a lot of core strength in that, yeah. and if you do it at the right timing. And there's a there's a lot of lazy re-entering of the pattern in 360s in juggling, which is not spinning all the way around or continuing the spin while you're almost all the way around and you know it's not like a real sharp crisp you know throw finish the throw spin stop catch continue you know and like a grisha he does that so well yeah to the extreme point he he goes into that whole ballet turn too yeah yeah. (laughs) that's so cool yeah Yeah. but i mean he throws high enough that you know he he's got time to do that and get a sandwich (laughs) <laughs> but yeah uh, a uniform could uh, could at least be something should at least scare people into getting into better shape so that they look good in the uniform right <laughs> yeah but but i also think i want to start i'm gonna i'm gonna put together a new training series uh for training to be an olympic juggler um all the uh, and cool. not not just the exercises and not i'm not talking about juggling i'm talking about just physical exercises okay. but then also juggling exercises but then also nutrition 
so you know to enhance all of the training that you're doing because i mean all athletes know that nutrition is a big part of uh of their success in in what they're training for and there are probably a lot of jugglers that don't know anything about that um that probably should at, at least certain certain foods and amounts to start with uh before they start getting into their more preferred uh nutritional choices yeah I, i've thought about something in the numbers competitions if we're going to add flashing and not just qualify. Uh, I, at least I feel like that could add the potential for a lot more jugglers, especially like yeah. uh, the British guys and um, to, to, to make more jugglers appear. In a way. I, I would see that as two, the two different categories, right? A flashing category and then a juggling category. Yeah. And, um, Yeah, it, it it seems like it should be, and it all comes down to how many medals are available, though. But yeah, we can at least but, start but that in WJF. We can yeah, start yeah. that, you know, with affiliates and, and WJF conventions, definitely. Yeah, I feel like if you uh, would emphasize juggling more objects uh, as good, then more jugglers would would try it. And kind of the way to do it is that if you start start low, for example with um yeah let's say eight balls and you have to you have for example two or three minutes to make at least a qualify so you make at least a qualify but then you can use the rest of for example the three minutes to get your best attempt and then if you've <laughs> made a qualify you can move up to nine and then you can try for at least three minutes and if you get a qualify you can move up to 10 instead of for example having two minutes And you maybe have to gamble to get that nine ball qualify uh, or that nine ring qualify because you you know that okay if I get the qualify it will be better than the eight ring run he did, but then it will be so short amount of time and you maybe you'll end up with a bad eight ring run and not a nine ring qualify instead of a decent eight ring run. So, so you're you're saying using the eight object time to move up to nine uh, if you qualify eight. No, I, I would say separate times. You get three minutes for eight. Yeah. And if you make that, you get three minutes for nine. If you make that, you get three minutes for 10. Uh, so nothing is added to the next one. It's just, it starts all over again. I think, isn't that, a, is, is that not how we do it now? No, at least it wasn't when I competed. It was a certain amount of time and then you could try one more object, but it was... Uh, We started at nine. Only that given. Yeah, we started at nine balls, eight rings, and seven clubs. So at that time, it was I, I tried to do nine rings because I, I got like a half decent eight run, and then I tried to do some nine ring juggling, hmm. but I didn't get any extra time to try it. And maybe if I stayed at eight rings, my result would have gotten better. But because I had yeah. to gamble, so there was no separate. So you you qualified eight, but then there was no separate nine ring. Uh, yeah, correct, correct. Time, time frame. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah well, I was thinking... the, the, Then I feel like if you get the nine ring qualify, now you're going to watch someone try juggling 10 rings. Um, yeah, that's the way that it should be. be. I, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure what happened that year. So I have to look oh, back. Okay. But yeah. but that is that is the way. Yeah, it, it always, the reason why we started at nine is because it always ended up at nine. And so yeah. I didn't I, I didn't want to waste time with eight because we know everyone's going to do eight. So, yeah. or no, well, with rings, it started at eight. We knew it would, sometimes it starts and ends at eight. Occasionally nine is done. But with balls, it always ends up being nine. It's so it's yeah. always, it's never, it never ends at eight. It never ends at 10. It always ends at nine. But yeah. right, if, if you do get nine, um, I, I believe we've always allowed the opportunity to then go up to 10 in the same amount of time for that. But maybe something weird happened that year. I'll, I'll look back at that. Okay. But We're thinking the same thing on that, I think. Awesome. Um, uh, isolated endurance. Do you think that should be part of yeah. the Olympics? No, I don't. <laughs> what if, what, well, if instead of standing on chairs, what if it's just like you're on the floor, but you have like this yeah. clearly defined area that's about the same size as if you were on a chair. And if you step out of it, you know, a light goes up and you know, a buzzer goes off yeah. or something like that. I feel like feet movement is a part of juggling 
um, to be honest. The, the ability to move your body underneath the patterns, knowing when to step forward, when to step back, um, if you're going to make minor adjustments, I think that's a part of it. And I honestly think it looks better if you do minor feet adjustments instead of stretching your arms like this. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. Of course, uh, if, if you have the mentality that you're going to stand still, you will focus more. Uh, I agree. Hold that, on, but... hold on. Let me interrupt there because Thomas said okay. this before and it drives me crazy that people misunderstand the meaning of this. It doesn't okay. mean, don't move your feet doesn't mean at all costs. What it means is uh, don't move your feet, but also juggle so that you don't have to move your feet. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. mean keep juggling even though you're way out here like this. Yeah. It means make throws that come back to you. So yeah. uh, anytime you have to move your feet or you move your arms out of alignment, that all that does is demonstrate that something uh, didn't go where you wanted it to. Yeah. So um, if you had to choose between the two, yes, of course, move your feet. That's because yeah. you're repositioning yourself underneath where it should have gone in the first place. Otherwise, yeah. you're juggling from different positions that you never practice in and that yeah. becomes a lot more problematic, but, um, but it, it basically, that's why there's deductions for that is because it just demonstrates that a mistake was made. It's a small mistake. And yeah, yeah. of course I would rather see someone move their Like you can't get away from that deduction. If a ball goes out here, whether you yeah. reach out there to get it or you move your feet yeah. to get under it, there's still a deduction for that. So there's, yeah. so there's no, there's no, um, incentive for not moving your feet, but still juggling badly. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 su I support that. Uh, and also, especially the, the mentality that you're going to try to make a throw so that you don't have to move your body. And that's a really good thing. But having it in the Olympics, um, no. But, 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 but it's... But Are you talking specifically the about the uh, endurance? Yeah. 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 Uh, but, um, but having it as a game... At the WGF, so not not in the competitions, but as a game, could be yeah. a really fun thing. Uh, with and it, could, yeah, that's fun. But I mean, it it does say something about the people that excel at it. Like you know, the difference between, uh, you know, Vova being able to do fifty catches of seven clubs while standing on a chair, or yeah. John Brady winning the seven ball isolated endurance, and you see how everyone else crumbles and falls apart. And they're trying, they're keeping their feet there and they're juggling out here because they're trying to stay on the chair and then they fall yeah. down. And then you see John Brady just, just like, you know, he's sleeping, you know, it, it, it certainly yeah. is fun, fun to see the difference in, in skill yeah. level control with that. Absolutely. So there, there should be some sort of reward for that, but yeah, maybe, maybe it's, it's too much. Um, if you're already doing, uh, yeah. because yeah. also with that though, you're not going to get as high of a number because at some point, if you're, if you're pushing the upper limits, of uh human juggling ability you're not doing it on a chair that's that's no, something you're that's you're not doing nine yeah. clubs on a chair maybe seven no. yeah and, and all, also then if you're doing numbers then the feet movement is especially important because then rings will fly down all over the place and you yeah. have to move your body quickly so uh and those saves are pretty pretty yeah. uh entertaining and exciting too though so yeah we, Definitely want to keep those in there. When I competed the first year with the um, with the scoring sheet and everything, um, one thing that I found a bit hard to understand was the deductions. Like, if I drop, how should how many attempts should I do at this certain trick? Yeah. Or if I if I move my feet a little bit, does it really matter that much? Or yeah, all, all of these deductions. How much does it really have to say? Should I just try the same trick all over again until I get it? Or should I just move on? Or, yeah. I think I, I have to look back at that, but I think um, if you've had to try the trick three times, you would have been better off not doing it at all in terms of drops. If you drop three times, that three okay, times. So is, yeah. So three drops or three attempts? Three, three drops. Two, uh, okay. two, two drops, three attempts, you might be okay. Um, I have to look back at that though, but that, that's my vague recollection of when we put it all together, what, what drops would, would mean in terms of undoing the points that you would get from doing the move yeah. the first time. Yeah. When I, when I added all of my routines together, they made, um, a certain amount of points. 
And then I think Josh Horton said that then you take the hardest routine of all of the different jugglers in the ring category and in the club and in the ball. And then you give it a multiplier so that right. it adds to maximum 10 points. That was the thing, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 And I think they, they just changed that in gymnastics also. It used to be that uh, 10 points was the most you could get in a routine. And then they changed that. And now it's you can you can get as many points as you want. And I, and I think if that if people can understand that and get away from, you know, a perfect 10 kind of score and just understand that, you know, jugglers are always getting better and that you can yeah. fit in more tricks within a certain amount of time. So we also limited the amount of tricks that you could do within that two minute time period. So everyone's doing maximum the same amount of tricks and then yeah. trying to connect as many of them together as possible. So I think, and a lot of this was to, to try to, I think you hit on this also to get cleaner performances, to get yeah. jugglers doing, you know, more tricks that they're capable of because I always felt like if I want to show someone, here's the person that won our overall championship and they're, they're dropping all over the place. They, you know, they, they're good, but they're making a lot of mistakes. And if this were, yeah. you know, a gymnastics floor routine and they kept falling down, you would wonder, and they won. So I, yeah. I, I wanted to, you know, clearly I wanted to look like, you know, they, they did something that looks like, you know, a championship routine uh, yeah. that represents the best of the sport. Um, but at, at the same time, there's a lot of people that want to open that up and, and have more opportunities to do more tricks and yeah. with more objects. So we'll put that back in for this year and, uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. But because I thought about that, if, if a one juggler out of three, for example, is really, really good at club, not at, at rings, then, uh, but, but not, but the two other guys are really good at clubs then kind of um, the difference here will be so big because this guy is competing with me and he is also really good at clubs. I will have a harder time and if he, if he didn't compete because then I would get so much more points than the guy that's oh, because really good of the at rings. Multiplier. Yeah, because of the multiplier and because of it's going from the, uh, the highest potential high score. Right, um, right. Yeah, so if we re if we eliminate that, and if it's just get get all the points you can, yeah, then that that evens the playing field a little bit. Yeah, um, and then it was the last thing uh, I thought. Like, if if we don't have the multiplier, then at least it looked like all of the ring tricks were um, rated quite low. I felt like uh, that that that's just my thoughts. Uh, it's something mm -hmm. that needs to get looked into, but. Um, no matter how I put the routines together, the balls and clubs routines gave me around a little, yeah, like a little bit over five points, while the ring routines gave me like four points. And if yeah. I were going to get a five-point routine with rings, it would be close to impossible for me. Um, huh. So yeah, that's if we're going to eliminate the multiplier, that's maybe something to look into. No, not the was, was that itself, before the multiplier? Everything as a whole. Uh, the, the before the multiplier, correct. Yeah. Before the multiplier. Because I, I think we tried to solve the problem of the 10-point score without the multiplier to begin with, to make it really difficult just to get a 10-point score to yeah. begin with the way it was scored now. So that's why all of, all of the moves. But as long as everyone's you know scored the same way, then yeah. uh, then there shouldn't be an issue with that as long as, as, as long as it's not being scaled to the best ring juggler that's there, a club juggler, or ball juggler. It's difficult to get 10 points. So if you do get 10 points or higher than 10 points, you've earned it. And that, that should be a, a note made of that, yeah. that, uh, you know, it's, it's very rare to get 10 points or, or above, which is yeah. you know true in most sports that had the 10 point maximum anyway, but we just yeah. allow for forgetting the multiplier and just going as high as you can. Yeah. But also now that might be more of an, an, a possibility because you have more time, more tricks you can do. It, and more it five, can, five minutes or how, how long? Yeah, we're, we're doing, we're, we're doing five minutes this year. It, so. it, is it a maximum amount of tricks or do you have to do uh, all of the different amount of props or can you just do one? Like, can you only do five clubs in your club routine? Yeah. 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 Or you can start, it three starts clubs. at three. You can start at yeah, three. Yeah. yeah. So you can do only three clubs. For example, just yeah, you can I do can just know. three. You can do just four. Yeah. You can you can pick yeah. one number, 
Um, the one thing I want to figure out is, is a way to gracefully and elegantly get the additional numbers of props. So like, yeah, be having them thrown in from off the stage is, is the easiest, the fastest and the most probably aesthetically pleasing, but then a little risky. So, and I don't like having prop stands for the sport. I don't, I also don't like seeing props on the floor for the sport for the same reason. I don't like seeing drops. Um, so I have to figure out a way that it makes the most yeah. sense for them to get the additional objects when they're doing their routines. Yeah. I feel like the prop stand is, is fine, but th that's just me. But I think that just having it in back in the back, if it's set up nicely, for example, or yeah. Yeah. I have to think about that. Yeah. I, I do like the idea of meddling in different in balls, clubs and rings. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I want to change that for this year, but that's definitely something to think about because I do like that yeah. idea. Uh, also, just a pointer in the in the um, scoring system for the rings, um, the previous previous year. One thing that I quite liked, or I like the idea of it. It was not good for me uh, personally, but that was that you gave more points for the ring tricks, if that makes sense. So, for example, a basic. Uh, ball tricks like five up three sixty with rings wouldn't give that much points. Oh right, but yeah. Things yeah. like have uh, like full reverse and pancakes, uh, those were more rewarded, and I think that's quite clever because then it pushes uh, jugglers to do ring tricks and not just ball tricks with ball rings. tricks with rings. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. that's all I was doing mostly. Is I was just converting all of my ball tricks to rings. That's what yeah. Bo did too. He just converted. Uh, and, me too. Yeah. 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 So yeah. What, what are you doing rings for? You know, what, what's the purpose of juggling rings? What do we want to see in a ring routine yeah. that we can't see in a ball routine? So yeah. whereas converting a club routine to a ring routine is impressive, not the yeah. same way from balls to rings. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, Delaney doing back crosses with rings. That's like, yeah. You know, I think Doug was the first one to try that back in 2010 or something, and uh, or maybe yeah. 2014. But he yeah, did like and, and flash. Oh yeah, oh yeah, in uh, in WGF or yeah, thinking yeah. in general, yeah, in WGF, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and as, as Sergey Ignatov Jr., yeah, at least he did shoulder throws. He did, did shoulder he did throws yeah. as well, and maybe yeah. one-sided back crosses. Okay, yeah, yeah. There's a big difference though with both yeah, sides. Yeah. I, I don't think I've seen the shoulder throws after that video. Yeah. Like I've seen uh, many do back crosses to shoulder throws. Still that only video, even though he encouraged everyone to, tr to try it. Yeah. yeah. It must be hard. Yeah. It must be harder than back crosses. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think. I don't know how you control the rings for a back cross to get them to not look like a, a you know, a yeah. fish. It's it's, it's, it, yeah, it, it's two different ways. So it's kind of like if you make a throw like this or like that. So, yeah. um, and, and personally, I think when you make a throw like that, it looks way better because then you can catch it like this and just bring it back and throw it again. Whereas if right. you do like this, you kind of have to catch it like this. Yeah. And uh, or catch it like this and twist it. Um, right. and also, and both of those are not uh, aesthetically pleasing, um, at least for me. But yeah. m maybe a little bit easier. Well, that was that was everything I had for you. Do you have anything else yeah. for? Me? No, I I think I've said everything I wanted to say. Yeah, <laughs> that's the conclusion of a successful conversation with when both yeah. parties have said everything they wanted to say. Awesome.